Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. You are our very special guest at Build and Partners Brand Building in 15 Minutes series. I'm Jocelyn Brumbaugh, the founder of Build and Partners, and we're super excited to have you here today to talk about meaningful business development coaching. This is something that haunts law firms, large and small. Um, so we're very excited to talk to you about it today. My colleague, Devin Pine, is amazing at business development coaching, and she talks fast. So she is the perfect person to cram all sorts of information about business development coaching and tips into your brain over the next few minutes. But first, you know us, we're building partners. We do marketing strategy for law firms exclusively. Uh, we are consultants to many AMLA 100 firms, but my favorite part about what we do is serving as an outsourced marketing department for firms with 15 to 150 attorneys. And we do that because our senior team, we all grew up in large law firms, some of the most popular, most prominent law firm names um, in Chicago and around the world. And we use a process-driven approach to everything that we do in raising law firm profiles. But you're not here to hear from me. You are here to get all of the business development coaching tips that could possibly come through in the next 15 minutes from my colleague, Devin Pine. So Devin, don't stop until we run out of time, go. Yes, thank you, Jocelyn. So yes, today we're gonna to be talking about business development coaching. But before we dive into how to build a meaningful program, let's talk about why these coaching programs matter and what their impact can be. The first impact is an increase in retention rates for both clients and attorneys. When attorneys see the firm is investing in them, they're more likely to stick around. That makes sense. But what about client retention? A study by Bain and Company, who you may have heard of if you're familiar with the Net Promoter Score, shows that increasing customer retention rates by just 5% can increase profits by 25 to 95%. So we know that building client lo loyalty is really good for that bottom line. How do we get there? How do we turn a coaching program into increased client retention? Well, coaching programs encourage collaboration and even cross-selling. Um, so I'm a total fangirl of Harvard fellow, Dr. Heidi Garner, whose research on collaboration saw that clients who are serviced by multiple attorneys across practices are not only more likely to stay at the firm, even if the, part, the service partner leaves, but can also generate 17% higher revenues. She did another more recent study around COVID and found that attorneys who were highly collaborative had far superior individual and collective performance than their counterparts who took a little bit more of an individual approach. Their revenues didn't drop nearly as far during the crisis and they recovered significantly faster. So we know what the end game is. Let's talk about how we get there. Coaching starts with four key components. We don't always love to hear it, but part of coaching, a big part of coaching is holding candidates or if you're an attorney yourself, accountable. There must be a level of follow-up and follow through on the assignments that consistently reinforce the tools and tactics for success. This accountability and ongoing support provide a space for attorneys to achieve results, which is obviously what we want. All right, inspiration. I know this can get a little bit squishy here, but and, you know we're going to discuss taking a tailored approach to coaching in a couple slides. But part of that is using a creative and inspirational approach to provide unique ideas on how to develop habits. Motivation, because your coach is in your corner. Providing the right motivation can help avoid that feeling that business development is a chore because of course it's, it is hard to battle with the billable hour, but providing that right level of encouragement, even if it's just a quick note, can sometimes be the difference between moving forward and feeling stuck. Um, okay, so we're getting to vulnerability. I know that it is spooky season, but vulnerability does not have to be scary. Uh, coaching creates a space for sharing ideas, thoughts, fears, even frustrations. Um, that coach can act as a sounding board, which can lead to a really meaningful impact. And I do want to mention here how coaching and business development has really changed during the pandemic. Uh, these key elements, both on the attorney's part and the coach's part, are still woven into the program. And part of that is providing a perspective for new avenues and pivoting if needed, which I think we've all had to do in the pandemic. 
All right, so the attorneys are in, the coaches are in, how do we get buy-in from firm leadership? In order to get that support, it is crucial to make sure that the program aligns with their goals and visions for the firm. But there may be more connections to that strategic plan than you think. For example, if there's a focus in the plan on a particular stream of business, start coaching attorneys in that practice group. All right, data, it is your new best friend. Give firm leadership the numbers and projected ROI and use that data to really paint a picture of what is possible for the coaching program. Um, I know this may come as a shock to some of you, but attorneys are not known for their love of change. But presenting a program in a way that strikes the right balance between pushing new behavioral changes and leveraging what attorneys are already doing well will make the program much easier for firm leadership to accept. And you know, the sell might not actually be that hard. A lot of AMWA firms are already increasing their business development efforts. They're incorporating coaching programs. So there is a chance that your attorneys are already asking for coaching. And here is our first little blue bubble tip. Once you get that green light from firm leadership, start with a small pilot group. This is not only gonna help you get your footing, but it's also gonna create a nice buzz around the program, get people excited. Okay, so who's the right candidate for a coaching program? Well, to put it simply, it's someone who wants to do it, right? So setting a program up for success in the beginning with attorneys who are excited to participate will help the program gain more traction. And you can see this list here really consists of a lot of busy attorneys. And you may have heard the question, if you want something done, ask a busy person. This is not bogging down. This is not about bogging down attorneys with a lot of busy work or homework. It's about giving them, giving the folks who want to change the tools to do so. And looking back at that accountability piece from earlier, the right candidate should also be prepared to agree to commitments, both from a timing perspective and on their deliverables. And as a coach, the success of your candidate is your success. So agree on those expectations early on, whether that's a conversation or if you're both signing an agreement, make sure that that is something you're both on the same page. All right, let's get coaching. Let's start our program. All right, so our question is, should the program be tailored or driven by process? Well, it should be and can be both. Uh, setting up a dedicated timeline is part of that process. It creates a structure for the program, but making sure that the tactics within each phase of that timeline are custom to the attorney's preferences is part of having a tailored approach. And tailoring the program becomes a lot easier when you really meet the attorneys where they are. And this goes back to, you know, finding that right balance for change. Jocelyn, does this remind you anything that Bilden does? Why, yes, Devin. Um, you know, what I love so much about this um, and the way that you approach this is how well it dovetails with our marketing infrastructure model, which is about helping attorneys expand and do more of what they already do well, because business development coaching is so scary to a lot of them. This really helps them to meet them where they are and capitalize on the success that they already have. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, this program is really designed to meet attorneys where they are and allow them to develop habits organically, that's really that organic habit, those organic habits are going to lead to long term success. Um, you also need to be sure to set up smart goals along the way. And if you need a refresher on what smart goals look like, they're specific, they're measurable, achievable, realistic, and they're anchored within a time front time frame. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about more about let's talk more about that process driven part and what that means. It's so key to a smooth coaching program. Um, you know, no matter who is going through the program, the first aim should be to identify and reinforce their differentiators. Answering the question essentially, why should clients choose this attorney? What makes them stand out? Step two is about mining the contact list and out outreach. Uh, in my opinion, this really is the most crucial part to any program. It really gets the ball rolling and allows for attorneys to start generating wins. Uh, within, I would say the first, second at the latest conversation between the coach and attorney, the attorney should start identifying their business development style. 
Do they like speaking, writing? Maybe they're passionate about art and wanna leverage some of the relationships on the board of that museum where they serve. Transparency on the attorney's part here is gonna allow the coach to identify the right style and point the attorney in the direction of the activities that are the right fit. And I, I really can't stress this enough. People don't wanna do things that they don't like to do. I mean, just th there's so much stuff on Netflix right now. If you're gonna ask an attorney to write a blog who hates writing to do that over watching Squid Games or you know spending time with their children, it's just, it's not gonna happen. Uh, so you gotta make sure that the tactics align with their business development style. Finally, you wanna find your in. Some of the outreach that you're doing of your contacts is gonna be really easy and organic, but other times you need your in, essentially a reason to reach out. And think about these three options, an invitation, do you wanna grab coffee? An introduction, you have to meet my colleague Jocelyn to help you with this really cool project you mentioned, and information. I saw this great article about this thing that you were interested in. And once those are in place, then you can start focusing on the more tailored aspects, but these are really an important base. All right, so I am obligated to say that business development is not about quick wins. It is a long game. It can take up to 18 months to see movement. And it's important to recognize that persistence pays off. It does take time to cultivate these new client relationships. Think about it like a pension. You're not gonna retire tomorrow, but eventually it will pay off. However, on the flip side of that, it is important to build in goals that allow for wins, like reaching out to low hanging fruit that will help build momentum. And not to mention it is fun to celebrate milestones and it's important to have fun in this coaching program. Um, I'm gonna clap here. It's important to track your outreach. It is essential. Uh, seriously, track your outreach. Short term, adding things to a spreadsheet will make you feel like you're moving the needle. And longer term, it will show you that you actually did move the needle. And that part is really exciting. And I do want to mention, this shouldn't all be conceptual. It's important to include practical skills and takeaways that attorneys can use day to day, like preparing answers to what's new or honing their networking skills or their virtual networking skills. Um, okay, if there's one thing to take away from the entire brand building series, it's to find a method of scheduling your outreach here in this blue bubble tip. Use your calendar to schedule reminders for yourself. Okay, so that is my spiel on business development coaching. We're going to take a little bit of a break during the holidays, but we are going to be back with brand building in 2022. In the meantime, if you want to get caught up on previous programs, please visit buildandpartners.com. We even have a nice uh, brand building tab for you right in the main navigation. Um, and I just want to say, you know, if you're looking to kick off the new year with a new practice group or industry team, I highly recommend that last program listed there about marketing your new practice. All right, Jocelyn, what else do we need to know? Well, you know, we don't have time for questions because we only have 15 minutes, but if you do have a question, you're welcome to email Devin or me, uh, happy to help out. And also if you like a lot of marketing tips crammed into a small space, sign up for our newsletter at hello at Building Partners. Thanks everyone. We will see you in January.